Hey, welcome to episode 15 of Talk. And uh, it's going to be an interesting day today. Uh, never a dull moment around this guy. Uh, so today's <laughs> guest is Scott Schiller, which you may know Scott Schiller from his uh, all of his videos. Uh, you know, if you enjoy these videos, like, share, subscribe. If you don't like them, just go do something else. Just go. <laughs> You know, I don't need your negative comments. I don't need your negative energy. There are lots of other things you can go do. Go play in traffic. I really don't care. So, uh, and just quickly, if you'd like to support this channel, uh, one of the best ways to do that uh, would be uh, to actually purchase one of my books. Um, and these are my four books. I have one on World War II Chaplains. I have one on... The Army Signal Pigeon Corps, one on CB radios as a cultural phenomenon, and also a book on the, the Civil War. So, uh, and I would recommend if you buy them, buy them off of lulu.com because uh, if you buy them off Amazon, Jeff Bezos gets to buy another freaking rocket ship and gets 90% of my money. And I have expensive hobbies, as all of you do, and you guys get it. So, anyway, okay, with, without any further delay, hey, Scott, how are you? Hey, Tim, how are you? I'm Today good. How's it in South Carolina today? <laughs> well, actually, I'm back now in Charleston, South Carolina. Aiken was a couple of years ago, and I moved back to Charleston there. Aiken's a nice place, but uh, I, I like Charleston a little bit better. Okay, yeah, I, I've heard beautiful things. I, I haven't spent a lot of time in the Carolinas. Um, yeah. You know, typically, if I, because I'm smack in the middle of Missouri, like it's the same distance to Kansas City as it is to St. Louis. I'm about... Okay. <laughs> Okay, I'm about fantastic. a mile and a half southwest of the Mizzou football stadium. So if you ever see, you know, okay. like the Gamecocks playing the Tigers here at home, yeah. like I can yeah. walk in my front yard and hear the game. But oh, wow. Yeah. Uh, but uh, so how did you uh, how did you get into this? Uh, first off, how did you get oh, into this? Uh, I'll, I'll try to keep it summed up. It's kind of a long, interesting story. Uh, my grandfather, Richard Haynes, was a uh, Army World War II veteran in the 8th Infantry. And uh, I think like a lot of vets, when he was in the service, he fell in love with the Jeep. So when he came back from the war in 1945, fought in the European theater, he purchased a 1946 CJ-2A. Um, and I've been around that Jeep since I was a little boy, and that was the Grandpa plowed snow with it. Uh, he did so for decades. And um, if you got to run with grandpa in the, the plow jeep that was you know that was a big honor and a big deal so i think that's where my, my initial love for the jeeps uh came into play uh when he passed away his cj2a had been off the road for a multiple amount of years uh and it was in really really rough shape you can imagine you know plowing snow with it for decades and the salt on the roads in western new york state uh, so i inherited it and, and and in all reality when people i had to look at the house say what are you going to do with this rusty old pile and you, know, you should put this in the scrapyard but I was, you know, adamant about not doing that, and I spent four years uh, restoring the two A there. And, and when I say four years now, I mean we did something on that every single night for hours. My wife will attest to that, and every weekend, if I wasn't working on the, is Jeep, that why you're in the garage work. right now? Oh, I'm always in the garage. Uh, that's my neighbors think I'm kind of freaky because I, I have a nice house and home that I. Uh, I thought she kicked you out. No. <laughs> I'm a garage dweller. I've got a little bench out here and a refrigerator and a TV. And you know, I kind of, if you've seen me on Facebook there a lot, you'll wonder why is that? Why is that guy always out in the garage? It's, it's kind of like my, it's, it's, it's where I live. It's where I live. So yeah. uh, anyway, when I, when I finished, while I was doing the CJ2A, I'm just, this is just a true story about this. Uh, I had never been on Facebook. I had never been on a social media site and I had never made any sort of video. Um, I got angry at a um, particular parts vendor and he was not, it's not a major vendor. It was a guy that was just selling stuff out of his yard. And I, I trusted him very much, but everything he sold me was uh, kind of a piece of garbage in, in the end as the process of building Jeep went on. So one night I said to my wife, I said, go with the video camera. And she said, what, what are you going to do with the video camera? I said, I'm going to make a little video and kind of make fun of this, you know, new old stock, you know, spray painted parts. And, and so I made this video and I posted it on one of the, the uh, Jeep forums and, and it got, guys thought that was just about the funniest thing. And so once, I guess once I kind of got the attention for doing something like that, I, well, geez, I like this. And then it kind of progressed from there. Uh, when I was working on the 2A, I, like a lot of other folks, um, having, uh, getting parts was, it was a big deal. And you never really knew what you were buying. It was, it was a quality part. It was not. And uh, I had a friend here in uh, Somerville, South Carolina, who 
was a big fan of Ron Fitzpatrick. What time frame is this? Uh, this is about, I did the G, the CJ2A, it's almost been eight years, nine years since I started it, uh, four years since I finished it, and then I got involved with Fitzpatrick. But um, the way I got involved with Ron was my friend in, in Somerville told me, you know, I was kind of griping about parts I had bought for the 2A that were already failing, and I had to replace them two or three times. He said, why don't you buy your parts from Ron Fitzpatrick G Parts? And I said, yeah, Ron Fitzpatrick G Parts. I said, he sells the same as everybody else. Yeah, we added a bit there, huh? the little words, but that's really what I said to him. And uh, I had to get a pair of the shock absorbers I had purchased were failing uh, miserably. So the first thing I bought from Ron was uh, some, sock, some shock absorbers. And when they came in the mail, they were packaged really nice. They felt you could look at them and just tell they were you know, good quality parts. So I started buying things from him. Uh, and, and, I, and I really liked what he was doing. I liked his, uh, his, his, his business model. And uh, one day I was on Facebook and I got a, a, a friend's request from Ron. And I I kind of, wow, Ron Fitzpatrick wants to be friends with me? <laughs> anyway, uh, I guess you could say the rest is history. Uh, we met each other in person at a Jeep meet in Pennsylvania. And he asked me, pulled me and my wife aside, and he said, hey, I got an idea for you, and I think you'd be good at doing this. And I want to send you a Jeep, and I want you to take it apart like you did your grandfather's. I want you to put it back together and make videos, uh, kind of under the premise that, I mean, I'm not a professional mechanic. I'm not a professional you know, a film person or an actor or, or any sort of thing like that. He says, I want you to you know, kind of just show guys that you can do this in your garage with little space and uh, minimal tools. And uh, like I said, I'm not that knowledgeable at all mechanic, but uh, as it progressed, um, more and more tension. And uh, he uses use those videos to put on the parts he sells. So when folks buy something from Rod, there's a little link down there. You can click on the YouTube channel. And, and, I mean, I kind of, I'm, I'm kind of forced to go, you know, I just try to explain it in the most simple of terms as it makes sense to me. And that seems to help out a lot of folks. And it's, it's quite an honor to have done such a thing. Mm -hmm. Okay. So that's, that's, that's kind of, that's kind of in a nutshell. There's lots of little other tidbits that go with it, but here we are, you know, and then um, when I, the Jeep, the 43 is finished. Uh, but what a lot of folks I don't think understand is, you know, it, you film all this stuff and you, while you're working, it takes a lot of extra effort to take a camera and get it down with your hands and film all these little pieces and parts are important. So you get all this, 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 this reel and this film, and then you have to edit it all to make like a, you know, seven to 10 minute long video on each individual component on the Jeep. Editing takes about, and, and I'm not exaggerating when I say this to you, one of those eight to 10 minute videos probably takes a good six to, to eight hours of time of sitting down at the computer, just trying to get everything exactly right, doing your voiceovers, uh, you're taking out background noise, doing intros, that sort of thing. Uh, so they do take an awful lot of time to do so. There has been an awful lot of effort went into I think we're just a little bit over 200 videos on the Team G503 uh, YouTube series now they're on YouTube. If you want to check that out, you can check it out there. Uh, uh, I, I still have videos to catch up to the completion of the 43, and I am working on them because guys, they, they like to ask all the time, when's this video coming out? And I love it. I love that they ask. Uh, it just it just does take a lot of time and effort to produce uh, something like this. I'm sure you know. <laughs> um, like I say, I don't put a, a ton of time into my stuff. Uh, here, let me go ahead and share this. Uh, so this is... This is, your, it. this is your body of work. And, you know, th these videos are really great. They're a great resource. I've used them on a few occasions, although I'm more in like the oh. tear down body, body work kind of phase where you're spending a ton of time on grinders and sanders and things like oh, that. Man. But, but I know yeah. when we're on the, we're on the going back together section yeah. of this project yeah. like in fact i put a tv in my garage just so i could possibly pull these up and and just oh, kind of cool. pause them back you know and, and check yeah. them out so so yeah. let's just say one of these videos how long do you think it takes you to produce a 10 minute video and i understand that you probably shoot multiple ones at any moment mm -hmm. so let's let's divide there there's probably a prep section there's probably a shooting section and then there's an editing section absolutely absolutely if, if i had to say like, like we were just talking about a few minutes ago but if i had to say per video including the setup time the filming time the actual you know, laying out everything and going back i bet you you you're probably pushing 10 to 12 hours for each each one of those little you know, less than 10 minute videos um and i i enjoy doing that it just it, it is a lot of effort and I'm, i i don't do jeeps Full time. Uh, I actually have been a home improvement contractor for 30 years, uh, and still and still do that on a full time basis. So this is kind of like my nighttime job. Mm -hmm. And uh, now, 
I will say this though, I'm trying to progress into the exact opposite. I know at 53 years old, uh, you know, life change is kind of different, but I would love to do just Jeep parts and uh, you know restoration videos and kind of be make my career uh, out, of, out of G503 miss if, if you would. Uh, we'll see if that'll happen. It, it, um, I became a uh, East Coast vendor, small for uh, Ron and for Joe's Motor Pool Parts. Uh, I've got a, a few items here. You know, I've got a room that's stocked with some stuff that I've got. I've got a, uh, some stuff listed for sale on my website. Uh, but with the COVID deal going on, the shipping issues and the cost of things that have risen so much and getting parts, we kind of slowed down a little bit on that, which is not an issue. Uh, because Ron, you know, he, his shipping from Oregon is, is fantastically down to a science. So anything that I talk about or I show uh, is available for, with you know, Ron Fitzpatrick G parts, and he gets it to you really quick. I'm sure, I'm sure a lot of the viewers out there would, would probably attest to that, that statement. Well, in so, fact, I've, but as I've time got, goes on, I've got something got here that came from there. And uh, oh. here, let me, in fact, I've not even opened it up yet. So here, let's just go ahead. <laughs> this is a... Uh, uh, it's a starter switch. Okay. You open it up, and this came from Fitzpatrick. Whoa, wh wh what is this? Why is this in my box? <laughs> Did he put candy in there? And then the switch is in there. So, <laughs> so I, like, is this yeah. factory? Um, I, I, I don't know. I, that, you know, that's a Ron Fitzpatrick thing. He's done that since the beginning with the candy. In fact, I made a joke one time when, he, when I ordered a part from him. And there's a video out there of it in the early days where I, I bought a couple of things from him. He didn't put candy in my package and I made a big stink about it. So about four days later, there was a package on my front doorstep. And I swear to you, there was enough candy in that box to fill the back end of that, that CJ2A. It was, it was kind of comical. That's his, that's his little thing that he does with the, with the candy in the, in the package. Yeah, so, well, well uh, I, generally I get, I get Jeep parts and diabetes from Ron Fitzpatrick. <laughs> I think we all. Yeah, I didn't think, didn't think it, it, that. What are those Swedish fish? Like, I thought that was like loofah fish or whatever. The, like, they serve at Minnesota, like yeah. Minnesota, yeah. Uh, you know, uh, yeah. potlucks. But yeah, yeah, yeah. Apparently, uh, like, a, yeah. like a, it's like a gummy fish or something, something weird. Yeah. I, I usually don't get to eat the candy that gets sent because, well, my children don't live here at the house, but when they did, uh, I think all, all children of uh, G503 years, I think that they get first dibs when they know those packages come. You'd be surprised uh, when when kids you know, see those packages with that Jeep logo come on the back. They know there's candy in there. So it's, it's kind of funny. I, I, I think a lot of folks get a kick out of that candy deal. <laughs> hey, I've got I've got a serious question for you. I heard that sure. you have an Aunt Phillies, but you call her Phyllis. What? <laughs> that, that one went right over my head. Uh, no. <laughs> now, this is this is the debate. I, this is kind of what I I kind of I kind of made a little bit of a, a name for myself over this Willis Willis thing. Uh, very interesting enough. My wife is from Western New York State, Canandaigua, New York. And anybody who kind of knows the history of John North Willis knows that he was from Canandaigua and had a bicycle shop uh, there at one point before he got into the automobile industry. Um, and in, in New York State. You'd be surprised how many people say Willis. Um, and I remember my grandfather saying Willis when I was a young kid. And my mom swears up and down that he said Willies. Uh, and, and I know I, I remember very distinctly, you know, Willis and he'd say Sears and that kind of thing. So mm -hmm. I did a little research on it when I first got involved in, in the Jeep uh, doing the CJ2A. And indeed, I found quite a bit of old ads and I found you know, that, that John North Willis did pronounce his name Willis. Uh, but then I guess there was a statement at one point made where people started calling the Jeeps Willies, and his statement was, and I'm, I'm not quoting it, you know, word for word, but something to the effect of, I don't care if you call it Willis or Willies, as long as you buy one of my cars. Mm -hmm. uh, and, and I, I understand that would be a, a good way to be, but I've always said Willis, and always been a big proponent of saying Willis, and have taken a lot of flack over that over the years, but it, it's kind of one of those things where uh, you do that, you kind of argue back and forth, and guys like to do that. It, 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 creates a, uh, a funness or you know some sort of a uh, phenomenon within within the lifestyle i don't i don't say hobby so yes i don't have an aunt phyllis <laughs> and just full disclosure that's my a good mom, one too my, you got me on that one my mom's name actually is phyllis not phillies so okay. um 
Okay, so let's let's just look at some of uh, maybe your YouTube or I'm sorry, your uh, Facebook groups that you're okay. pretty active in. And oh boy, that see. Facebook. Yeah, Facebook lost twenty five percent this week. It's uh, early February of I know twenty twenty two. So um, yeah, yeah, you know, Facebook may be becoming the new MySpace before long you know i guess how i'll say it on that is and i don't have an opinion either way but uh you can't stay on top i don't think forever in this tech world the way it is and sooner or later uh yeah. you know somebody's going to come along and, and, and you, you can't be the, the big dog forever i imagine so you know i enjoy the facebook i don't think that i would have the uh friends and the connections that i have without social media mm -hmm. uh it, it's, it's amazing that i can chat with somebody in indonesia germany france uh, even Russia. I've got a friend of mine who uh, he actually has a Willis Jeep in Russia, and he sends me messages and, and little notes and little videos on a regular basis. So um, that aspect of Facebook is fantastic. Uh, I don't always. Uh, one thing I'd like to say about Facebook, if I could, Tim, uh, I like to goof around and I like to kind of have a good time with things. And uh, I think sometimes maybe some of the things I say or do or post comes across uh, not quite the way I want it to. And I, I think that's one issue with, with Facebook. I mean, I, I've even had guys say things to me, and I'm like, what? I can't believe you just said that. And then when you actually talk to the person, this is what I said. Oh, you know, so I, I think that, you know, social media sometimes can be a double-edged sword. So, yeah, I see um, you enjoy that. I like to see your posts there on your Slack row that you're, you're working on on a store. And so that's pretty neat. Yeah. Um, yeah, I think you're kind of like me in that, uh, you know, your humor, your preferred humor de demographic yeah, you know, my, my preferred humor demographic are 56 year old white males who work in my office. Yeah. Um, and then occasionally some other people will get it. But speaking of humor. Yeah. What about this guy? This guy. <laughs> <laughs> oh, boy. Uh, Damon Viola, uh, he restored, I can't remember the year of GPW he restored, but he restored a beautiful GPW. Mm -hmm. um, and a few years back, I flew out to Petaluma, California with Ron, and we had a booth set up there. And I got to meet Damon Viola uh, in person. And him and Sean Nichols, uh, they're actually, actually, Damon Viola is a, a professional actor. Uh, he's been in did the series Deadwood on HBO and a couple other movies. So he has actually you know, been trained as, a, as an actor. And then Sean Nichols actually uh, has a degree and very, very knowledgeable in video editing. Mm -hmm. uh, so those two got together a while back and they decided to make a channel called Jeep Talk. And uh, one of their one of their favorite things to do is to, to make memes and pick on me. And, and I absolutely mm -hmm. love it because, you know, uh, they make a picture like that when you're looking at it right there. They take a picture of me and they stick it in some sort of World War II thing or on top of a building. And, you know, guys get a kick out of it. And, I, and you know. So I've had people actually say to me, don't you get upset about that? And I was like, no, I, I think it is the, if you can't make fun of yourself, well, then maybe you ought not to be in this, this sort of industry. But you see all those things he's done to me in the past there. And I, yeah. I've actually had a couple of posters made of a few of my favorite ones of those and some to a few friends, friends of mine. That's so that, that would be, that would be Jeep talk. Damon Viola and Sean Nichols. <laughs> As they say, mockery is the highest form of flattery. I, I guess so. I mean, they, I, like I said, I've spent time with both of those fellas. We actually made some videos, Ron and I did with them. And, and, and in reality, the talent that Sean and, and Damon have, it's it's movie quality stuff. It's just uh, uh, they're very, very talented guys. And I guess we're giving them a shout out. But uh, I really enjoy them and their videos. And I, I definitely I love the memes. I and mean, look how many of them there is. It's, isn't that insane? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, he does quite a, quite a few of them, and and I used to enjoy his videos when he did them. I don't think he's done any for several years. Uh, but... Damon has been building. Uh, he's he lives. He built this beautiful garage. I mean, it's just absolutely stunning. And he's been working on that for a long, long time. But I, my understanding is is that he's going to have a green screen uh, and, a, and a kind of production uh, office in that in that building that he's doing. And so maybe he'll get back on those. The, if uh, you can pull up Jeep Talk on your screen, there it's is that the it's that, that actual. I, I'm pretty sure this is you, isn't it? Yeah, that's me. Okay. <laughs> uh, yeah, Jeep Talk. There we go. So this is yeah. their their page. Yes, and if you scroll down there, you'll see a bunch of videos, and I think there's a video there called Schiller Gets an F, and uh, that's a pretty funny one. We we've also made you know, quite a 
quite a stir in the Jeep board with the F scripts and the F marks and the F brands and the, you know, all, all those fun things. I actually have, uh, you know, I am a Willis guy. Uh, now, it's not to say that I don't like Ford GPWs. It's just that it's nice. To, again, same thing kind of with the Willis Willis thing. You kind of play one against the other there. Um, I actually have a, a Ford F marked uh, F script tattooed on my shoulder. Uh, and it's just kind of one of those things that's a lot of fun to kind of, you know, rib guys and go back and forth. Now, with that being said, uh, let the cat out in the bag a little bit, and I don't know exactly what's going to happen, but I've got a set of axles and a frame uh, out of Ron Fitzpatrick's in Oregon there uh, for GPW. And my idea with that's going to be Joe's Motor Pool is coming out with a whole line of fantastic parts. They've already got a bunch of the stuff out already, but this coming year is going to be really special uh, mm -hmm. with what they produce. And my idea would be is, is I'm going to try to build a GPW out of as much of their reproduction parts as I can. And, and, and would never try to pass it off as an original. I just want to kind of in the future demonstrate how fantastic quality uh, Joe's uh, motor pool parts are and how, how detailed they are. Mm -hmm. And I think that that'd be a neat project to do. Now, Ron keeps joking that he, he scrapped my axles in my frame and I, he better not have, I kind of stashed them away in the corner of the lot there on his property uh, during the last uh, open house that he had last May. And every time I make mention of you, oh, no, 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 I threw those in the scrap. I said, you, you better not put those in the scrap in. But hopefully so, so what, what, what can we expect? I mean, you tease something there. You say there's a lot of things coming out from Joe's Motor Pool, exciting things. Yeah. Uh, can you tease any of those? Uh, uh, without me getting in, into a lot of, no, I, I won't get in any trouble, I guess we're saying, but uh, they're working on, one of the things that I'm really excited about, we've been working on this for a long time. I don't know if you've seen the axes and shovels that I restore. That's kind of a little sideline that I did uh, while I was doing the 2A to kind of fund my project. Mm -hmm. uh, and they're getting, the, the axe heads and the shovels are getting really hard to find. So uh, they've been working on, and I've seen the samples of uh, a, an axe head that's going to be exactly like the four pound Dayton pattern. Uh, that may have, may have uh, Team G503, maybe, maybe even a Scott Show uh, signature uh, line. I don't know. Uh, and then the handles are the. It'll have an S S script on it. An S script. I know that would be, that would be okay with me. Uh, the biggest thing is with the, with the axis is the handle has to be curved a certain way to fit into those, those grooves, the joints outside of the panel. There you right. And then the fawn's foot is the hardest thing to reproduce. Uh, and I, that's the real clicker to this, but those are in the works. The other thing that I'll mention, and Ron and Dean Harvey, don't please don't add me, I'm, but I'm excited about this. Uh, they're working on a, a fantastic line of, uh, let's just say, let's just say wheels and rims and panels, and they are going to be uh, absolutely outstanding. I've seen the prototypes. Um, actually, uh, I got to go to Normandy two years ago uh, and hang out with the Joe's Motor Pool folks for two weeks. And which meant me taking a tour of the facility there in Weston Supermail where they manufacture a lot of their parts. Um, fantastic guys, really, really uh, in tune with detail. And uh, I mean, Dean Harvey's got the, the drawings that uh, were, were made by Ford that he's producing a lot of these parts from. So it's uh, right to the T. Uh, so I'm pretty excited about that. So I don't know, I don't know how much I should say, but I definitely can tell you there's axes and shovels coming. Uh, and there's one. Uh, there's distributors. That's that was the latest one. Is the distributors that got the got the prototypes to those done, and that's going to be a huge deal in the Jeep world because uh, a lot of you know that those distributors are getting hard to find too, and parts to rebuild them are almost impossible, mm -hmm. uh, at least in, in in my world, my world from what I've seen. Cool. So did that, did that help you a little? I, uh, yeah, you, a little? you know, and I I need rims for my slat. Uh, they came with combat yeah. rims, and they're yeah. They're older, so I'm actually selling those off to a friend of mine. Actually, it's my mailman. Um, yeah. My mailman, uh, him and his son are doing a CJ uh, MB conversion. Okay. Okay. And uh, so he wanted some combat rims, and uh, you know, I, I store a trailer out there, so um, yeah. you know, I cut him a good deal on those. So yeah. I need to, I need to get correct rims, and really the only option right now for a slack grill rim is the solid ones from MD One, but I think they're yeah maybe a half inch too wide. And I'm not concerned so much about a half inch on a tire. I would almost rather have it. Yeah. Uh, yeah. But also it's a question of availability. And, you know, uh, yeah. it's just shipping is just a disaster right now. I think Peter developed. You, you hit that one right on the head. It, it's it's, it's kind of got the whole world in an uproar. And, and living in Charleston, South Carolina, 
uh, near Port City. I mean, we don't have the issues they have out west, but out west, from what I understand, is just it's just an absolute nightmare to, to get anything into that port right now. And then the, the cost has gone up so high that it mm-hmm. kind of slows things down. And it, it'll, it'll get better, I hope. It'll, it'll, it'll probably get better in the near future. I'm, I'm kind of counting on it. I hope it does. Um, combat ribs. Let's go back to combat ribs for just a second. Um, the thing, the biggest issue with combat rooms, I'm sure you've seen, you've been around this sport long enough to have seen that the, uh, the safety issues that have uh, presented themselves with some of the other manufacturers and uh, that kind of scared a lot of guys and rightfully so it should. And so there's, there's been great effort uh, put into the quality and safety uh, of the Joe's vertical ones that I do know are coming out in the future. So that, that's a, that's a big plus. It, it, it's nice when a manufacturer cares hundred percent about what they are manufacturing and selling to the public. That's a big deal. Yeah, there was the there were those uh, the MD one ones were okay. The ones for right. the other ones from uh, somewhere else, maybe China, that were made. Yeah, and yep. a friend of mine did a video on those. Uh, his channel was Ed Willies. Um, I saw the video. Yeah, yeah, and I, I know yeah. that guy. Uh, actually, I know yeah. I know his twin brother. Oh boy. Um, but uh, I think he may have taken those down. Um, but really? uh, yeah, yeah, it's unfortunate because I, his videos were actually pretty good in terms of, uh, especially with the differentials and things like yeah. that. So as I was going to get into those phases of my project, I was going to go back to those. So I may have to talk to his brother and try and get him to put those back up. But I think yeah. he he has less of a thick skin than I do. Yeah. yeah. About things, but uh, yeah, the ones on uh, again, I have a forty-two script GPW, and I have the MD wands on there, and you know yeah. they're fine. And um, the original, the original rims on my slat, um, n- number one, they're not correct for the Jeep, although they're you know it's correct for a motor pool Jeep and how it left its the existence of the military. You know that Jeep sure. is so original in so many ways but um and just trying to deal with with old combat rims in terms of uh just getting them apart and fixing them and yeah. also just the safety issue yeah and, that's the big one and, and and i would just rather trade a little bit of authenticity for a good reproduction part that crucial yeah. so i don't end up on the side of the road dead someday yeah. <laughs> Yeah, and that's not a joke. I'm not laughing. I, do, I agree with you 100%. That's uh, safety is a big issue. Uh, over the years, I've been I've been involved now uh, for about over 10 years in actual the actual restoration and in, in doing up you know, buying parts, selling parts, trading. And uh, you, I've seen some really really shady stuff come out in the past where I was like, how could these people even make this kind of thing? Because I mean, it's one, it's one thing to make a bad part, but it's also a really bad thing to kind of put people in a, in a situation like you say, you know, if you're lucky, you break down on the side of the road and not, you know, hurt yourself or somebody else. So mm-hmm. quality and safety, key. There's no, there, there's no uh, any other way to do it safe than that. Well, and I'm excited that SGI is getting into the business of making parts, uh, you know, and MD1 has kept the, ho- the hobby afloat for a very long yeah. time. And and it's, it's easy to look back and say, uh you know, and discount some of the stuff that they've made. But in the end, sure. half of the Jeeps that are out there right now wouldn't be out there without their their parts. And Joe's Motor That Pool, is true. That is Joe's true. Motor Pool has brought in a great addition to the line. And now with SGI, I, with my slat, the side panels are all going to be uh, the replacement uh, body panels are all SGI. The floor is Joe's Motor okay. Pool. I think I'm going to get a Joe's Motor Pool riser. Yeah, yeah. So, uh, well, fantastic, fantastic. Yeah, I, I've seen I've seen some of the SGI stuff on, on the web, and it, you know, I can't. It's terrible, but I if so many people that I interact with, and I've seen, uh, I've actually seen videos of their uh, facility as well. Um, I've had a little. I can't pronounce his name, but it begins with an M. <laughs> and uh, he contacts me every now and again. You know, sending me little things. He does. They seem to be. It, it's it's fantastic when anybody in my opinion, puts effort into keeping these vehicles on the road because it, it, like just like you said, MD1, what if there was no, what if there was no MD1? You wonder where our our beloved Jeeps would be without folks that, that did take the effort to make those parts. So uh, it, it's gonna be really interesting to see how these manufacturers are going to move this hobby, I'll say hobby, uh, into the future. And I'm, I'm pretty excited about it, really happy to be a part of it. It means an absolute bunch to me. So. 
Yeah, well, and I think the difference between things that were made 20 years ago, 20 years ago, it's basically the same technology uh, that they were using to build the, the, right. the Jeeps originally. And now things have moved forward with CNC machining and you know, Absolutely. 3D printing and things like that, that, Absolutely. that not only allows them to reproduce things at a higher precision, but also in smaller batches. Yeah. Right. Correct. Absolutely correct. Yes. Yeah, so a lot of little things. And I can't think of something off the top of my head, but a lot of little things, you know, manufacturers don't want to touch because, you know, how, how, how many rivets, let's say little rivets for your back seat, are, are you going to sell? So, uh, you know, they don't, they don't manufacture because it's not worth the time and effort. You're absolutely correct when you say, you know, modern technology enables that to be done in smaller batches, uh, which keeps the quality up and also keeps the price, you know, reasonable and down. So that that's, I wouldn't have thought of it that way, but that's a good point. It really is. Yeah. Well, and I think what's all the other thing that, that that's one thing that's going on in the parts business. The other one is some of the longer term vendors who've been around uh, a while are starting to age out and uh, yes. new, new people are picking up like, uh, like Derek with general Taylor's, you know, oh, yeah. basically picking up the line of Nelson's Jeep parts. Yes. Um, and I, I'm excited about that from him. Um, Derek Kulsar, uh, let me, yeah, he's giving me a shout out on his, his interview there. So let me, I got, got to tell you quick how Derek and I met. I don't know if you uh, remember back maybe a, two years ago, uh, Derek put a video out there on G503. It was his uncle uh, was walking around the Jeep that Derek had just purchased. And he walked around and kind of was telling me you know, what the black outlights were and what this was and what that was. And then he comes around the front side of the Jeep and he yells out, he goes, what a piece of junk. I saw that video and I started laughing. I don't, I don't think I laughed that hard. And I don't know what struck me so funny. It, you know, it, it just Uncle Chuck, the way he said it just cracked me up. And so I contacted Derek and I said, hey, I said, now, your uncle made me laugh more than anybody's had in, in months. I said, I'm going to send him a Team G503 uh, baseball cap. And uh, it turned out that Uncle Chuck was a World War II veteran as well. And he also was a body man. So he got that hat and uh, he, I was so proud to, to send it to him because he, for some reason, I don't know, it just struck me as so funny. But Derek and I got to be friends and we'd talk on the phone and we'd chat over the web and that sort of thing. And uh, he was visiting Florida this past year and he called me up. He says, hey, uh, I'm riding back to Ohio from, from Florida. And if I make a decision right now, I can come and be at your house by five o'clock this afternoon. And I was at work and I said, oh, God, oh, OK, uh, yeah, I'll get home. So I, I got to meet Derek in person. He, see, he was here at the garage. And, he got to check out the Jeeps and we had dinner together and took the kids to the swimming pool here in the neighborhood. So Derek Colson and Taylor, they're fantastic folks. And I think they're going to do really, really well because of all the new old stock stuff that they, they, that they purchased. And Derek is really, uh, he's really attuned to what he's doing. And he's also, uh, if he doesn't know something, he's one of those guys who will, will find out the answer for you. So Best wishes to them uh, on, that, on that new endeavor. Seems like they're doing pretty well. Seems like they're doing pretty well. Yeah, yeah. I, I would think there was a large initial investment there, and yeah, uh, I, I think once they once they're able to get their building up and operate out of a single facility, that's yeah. just going to make their life so much easier for them. So, yeah. um, you know, one yeah. thing I also want to ask you about is again, I haven't really been in that part of the country a whole lot, but it seemed like you sure. do events uh, going to Kurahi. Yes. But well, what's oh, that like? Well, that got started. I mean, I've been going to Curry. My my wife's cousin uh, used to eat, well, he still is, but he's a he's an insurance guy right there in town. So I've been going to military weekend for 20 plus years. And a good friend of mine, Eric Colomaya, uh, you may know him. He does defend Jeep works. You'll see him all over the web and he restores carburetors. He was in the 101st Airborne for in part of his life in, in the 80s. And so him and I got to chat and we liked the band of brothers and Eric and I said, you know, I said, have you ever been to Tacoa, Georgia? He said, no. So we went together and met there in person. You, know, you make friends over the web and you get sometimes you get lucky enough to meet these folks in, in, in real life, I call it. And uh, Eric decided he was going to march up Kurhi Mountain in full gear. Now, running up and down that mountain, like you see in the, in the band of brothers, what those fellows did in the training camp back in the day was incredible. But to just march that hill alone in your full gear with your M1 Grand and your helmet on, and, uh, it's quite taxing uh, to do that, the three miles up, three miles down. Um, 
And then they had a museum there where the veterans would come and they'd have their books and they'd have their signings and you'd get to meet the real, you know, the real band of brothers guys, not, not the actors. And um, I took a shine to uh, Ed Shames, Colonel Ed Shames. And unfortunately, um, he's passed away this past year. That kind of must be good. I know you're not supposed to have favorites. Yeah, I get choked up just thinking about it. But, uh, you're not supposed to have favorites, but I did. And uh, Ed Shames was my favorite guy. He was the, he just, he just had that spark, 94, 95 years old, just had that spark. And he would tell you stories and we would ride up the vets of the Jeep. We'd go up to Curry. Uh, if, if you, the reenactors all come there too. We set up a camp in the whole nine yards. But if you ever had the opportunity to go there, I would say that that would probably be one of my top five favorite places to be in the whole world. And just the history of the 506, you know, PIR. Uh, to see where they were. And like I said, if you just march that hill, just not even, we call it the hill. Uh, if you just march it, not a little run it, because people do, uh, you will see that that was not an easy feat back in the day. So uh, my utmost respect to the uh, World War II 101st veterans, the Airborne veterans, it's, it's, a, it's, it's also been a very big, big uh, honor for me to have any sort of part of that. So um, try it out if you could ever make it. There's, there's some folks that have actually contacted me from way out west, Oregon, California, and they're kind of making plans to come this year to Tacoa. It's in October uh, to come to Tacoa this year. They see the videos. They see the pages we have out there. They see the veterans. Unfortunately, as time goes on, we're losing a lot of our veterans, especially World War II veterans all the time. And yeah. That crowd of vets gets smaller and smaller, which is, uh, that's, you know, that also makes, makes me sad. But, you know, life, life, life does go on, I guess. It would be you say I'd rather have had the time with those guys than none at all. So um, mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, and, and when when I was growing up, they were everywhere. Um, yeah, you know, they were yeah. basically the age of the Vietnam veterans right now, and right. Uh, right. a little bit younger than my grandfather, older than my dad, yeah. and um, I uh, I went to Normandy for the 60th anniversary. And, oh, fantastic! And uh, that would have been 2004. And yeah. we were at, we went to this uh, thing at the Hippodrome in Grenye, I, I believe it's called, sure. where uh, that's where a bunch of paratroopers got misdropped and it was all flooded around there. And then they held right. out there for about four or five days. And then uh, I forget which SS, SS unit, maybe second SS, third SS came in there and just flattened the town. Uh, a doctor an army medical doctor had stayed behind with some of the sick and wounded in the church and they shot the uh they shot the uh the md and also the mm -hmm. town priest and uh those guys all fled so i was yeah. so i was at this this event with them and talking to them and stuff and um and and i saw those guys leaving there at like midnight and yeah. they were hammered like oh, literally yeah. they had they were hammered and they were taking bottles back to their hotel yeah. and drinking and, and at that point they would have been probably in their late 70s right and, and then we went to the ceremony for some of their fallen comrades that had been captured and then shot and killed in this church uh yeah. churchyard and those guys right. were standing there and they looked rough but they were there yeah yeah they wouldn't have missed uh, it. Normandy is a, an absolutely amazing thing. You see, you know, you see the movie Saving Private Ryan, and you see the Band of Brothers, and you see the different documentaries, and even actual war footage of, of D-Day and that. Until you, uh, and I, I was very, very fortunate to be able to, I never thought in a million years I would get to go to Normandy, France. And, um, my grandfather did not participate in D-Day. They brought the 8th Infantry in through Normandy on the 4th of July following D-Day. Mm -hmm. And so his, 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 Part of the war began there, went you know, into, into Germany, what they said was from the Rhine to the Ruhr was the 8th Infantry thing. So I got to see some of the places that, that my grandfather actually was back in World War II. Um, and the other thing I want to say about Normandy is when you are there, the, the magnitude of what you actually stand in, in, the, in the cemeteries and on the, on, the, on the cliffs and on the beaches, you have, until you get to physically, with your own eyes, see that. I don't think any of those movies uh, or documentaries that I've seen would, would mean as much as it would be as they actually being right there. So, uh, mm -hmm. any World War II enthusiast, anybody who gets the opportunity, you know, Normandy, France is an amazing, amazing place. Yeah, it's and the just, amount of hardware that that was there is just amazing. Yeah. You know, we we yeah. running down a road and there'd be two Sherman tanks at an intersection, and yeah. they, and they are they aren't like gate queens. These are these are operational tanks. And I remember walking yeah. up the dragon wagon. 
Yeah. You know, seeing the tires are as tall as me. And uh, there was one, one day where, where we were uh, standing there uh, in this field where all these vehicles were going to park. And I remember counting like 60 to 70 CCKWs and Dodges pull in and it was oh, yeah. super impressive. And then they parked and everybody pulled out their folding picnic tables and started having lunch. And I was like, okay, there went my moment. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. But, it, but, yeah. but still, I mean, it's, uh, another moment that I had when I was there was um, when we left that thing at the Hippodrome that night, my friend he had a Belgian friend had a Harley WLA and he was oh, writing yeah. it had some kind of trouble. Yeah. And so we had to stop on the side of the road and it was like midnight, uh, yeah. roughly about the 4th, 5th of June, 2004. Yeah. And we were stuck on the side of this road for like an hour. And you hear nothing but the sounds of Normandy. You hear cows, and it's like yep. this is this is what it sounded like. Yeah, it's it's incredible. Uh, we stayed at a manor house that was out in the country, and I know exactly what you're talking about. I'd walk out to get signal to call my wife back in the states every evening, and there'd be a horse or a cow or you know something you know, right, sitting right there just looking at you while you're on the phone. It was pretty cool. Um, the, the real one of the coolest things, and I don't know if you saw the videos that we put out, but I never also thought in a million years that I would get to drive a, a Willis MA, a Bantam BRC, uh, the GP, uh, the, the Ford GP four wheel steer over there. So I got, not only did I get to go to Normandy, I got to drive every prototype Jeep uh, that was, and that was a huge honor. When they first said that I could drive the MA, that column shift MA, I, I was actually kind of reluctant to even drive it. Like, I, I don't want to hurt this, this Jeep, but uh, we had we, we quite, a, quite a ball over there. So, I don't know. And, I don't know, I don't and know speak, prototype Jeeps. Speaking of unusual Jeeps, I think uh, you pointed this out. Let me go ahead and screen share this. Uh, here we go. Can you see that? Is that Ron Fitzpatrick's GPW four wheel steer? I see it. Yep. Yep. Yeah. That's his. So, yep. yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Those guys out there in Jimmy Strauss Jeeps, uh, I don't know if you're familiar with Jimmy Strauss, but he is kind of a premier Jeep school if the, in the country, if not in the world. The guy is incredible. He's got no brakes. <laughs> and that's him chasing the Jeep because it's got no brakes. But uh, Rhonda commissioned him to do a project. Uh, it's, been a, it's been a few while back. And the chassis was done at the last open house there on Fitzpatrick Jeep parts. Uh, but that four-wheel steer, it's a GPW. Uh, that's that's Ron's baby, and he's all happy about that. He sent me that video last night because they're getting close to having it finished. Uh, mm -hmm. Four wheel steer is amazing. The, the turning radius on that, and it's so fun to drive because when you when you turn this the, the steering wheel, you, the tightness of that turning radius it just kind of gives you this kind of like almost like a roller coastery feeling. I would say, mm -hmm. and uh, you know, it's a, it's just amazing. I did see Grenier's uh, GP there with the four wheel steer. Those machines are absolutely incredible. It, 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 I, I can't say anything more than the that. Just, you talk about technology way ahead of its time. That, those four-wheel steers are the shits. So it's, it's just the way I'll say it. Did you hear his take about driving them, though? That, like, that, that number one, they're, they're very difficult to drive safely on the highway. Right. And that also just, it, it just moves in a direction you, you really have to spend time learning the jeep the four yes your jeep because it's yes. going to do it's it's just a totally different feel of an of, of a jeep and yeah the, like you're turning but now sudden the back end's doing something completely different right than you're, you're almost used like to. a little fish a little almost like a little fish tail in the back there it's funny you would say that i used to oh. was, we left from england so we went from england took a ferry over to normandy the first thing I got at our time with was driving on the left side of the road. And then I'm in this MA, I'm following Dean Harvey, and he's in the, in the four-wheel steer GP. We were going, you know, we're traveling pretty good, 50 miles an hour. And I was watching the rear end of that GP, and you could see a little, little field, I'll call it fish, little fish tail in the back. And I kept watching, kept watching. And I even mentioned to Rob, I said, you know, hey, and he said, oh, yeah, that's fine. It's a four-wheel steer. That's what it does. And exactly like you say. And, then Rory said, "It probably you, you, it's a skill you have to you have to learn, and, and it, it's not the same as driving you know straight axle on the back. There's no question about that. No question." Yeah, um, I think I need to ask you about this. Uh oh, what is this? Hello, Jeep friends. It's Scott Schiller, the Jeep Swami, Rope Swami. 
Uh, a lot of you have seen I've got the tow ropes out there for sale. Uh, oh, boy. So you, can... really, you, you came prepared today, didn't you? Uh, uh, oh, no, hey, actually, so... actually, I just looked. I just, oh, actually, it's not sharing. Or is it? Is it sharing now? Can you see it? Yeah, I can, I can see it. <laughs> the, the Jeep Swami. Uh, I've been making I, I I've been making some tow ropes, tying some some tow ropes up for guys, and uh, I I was doing something goofy before the holidays, and I thought you know what can I do silly to make these guys get a chuckle and get a laugh. So I took a chunk of the rope that I was doing I, I made myself a little swampy hat. Uh, I couldn't quite figure out how to do like a G whatever you know movie tricks they do when they make the snake out of the rope. So I that was that was best that I could do. Uh, I like to make it fun. Um, when I was a kid, my, my dad, who was, we were talking about Vietnam, my dad was a hospital foreman uh, in the Navy who was always stationed in Marines, and he did two tours in Vietnam. Um, my dad was known for uh, his, his sense of humor, and uh, you would, he would joke and make fun and laugh, and when I was a kid, I wanted to be like my dad, so joke and you know, make fun and laugh, and uh, he he bought back then those days you might remember this tim uh, do you remember when uh, steve martin was on uh, saturday night live oh That's yeah been, okay so steve martin was my hero when i was a kid and just you know i i, I kind of imitated him and then later on it was eddie murphy that made me laugh and richard Pryor and the comedians back in the 80s so you know i like to cut up and goof and uh make it fun now a lot of people like that some some people don't some people think i'm a real goofball and you know, that's okay. I mean, it's just, you know, I'm, I'm trying to do the best I can to uh, keep things fun and, 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 and put some enjoyment into it as opposed to, I've never been a kind of, this has to be like this, this has to be like this regimented uh, sort of person. And so I guess, like I say, the Jeep Swami thing, I was making tow ropes and I was being a goofball in the garage. Well, <laughs> I guess you should be careful what you put on the web because you never know who's going to see stuff well, like that. Well, I think the good news is that we know you'll never become a politician. No, <laughs> no, that's not going to happen. No, or uh, no, become a successful COVID. politician. I think that's maybe a better way of saying it. So exactly, we, we, exactly. We, we see, I was trying to find some of. Oh, Jeep friends! It's Scott Schiller. The <laughs> uh, let's see here. I was trying to find some of your Normandy stuff. Um, oh, that's 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 probably way. It's way down. That was almost two years ago. Um, you might find it in the videos. There's, yeah, there's that, that's a, where I'm looking right now. Yeah, you know, it's it's been there. I'm I'm looking at my phone here, the camera here. I'm seeing those small pictures. You're getting closer, I think, Tim. And then, if you see one that's uh, of you doing the any of the rear jeeps here, people. Oh man, you're getting closer because there's a picture of me standing. I think that's Utah Beach. Yeah. You know, what amazed me about Utah Beach is the tide. How quickly the tide came in. Isn't that crazy? Is this, is this Joe's Motor Pool right here? Yes, it is. You want yes, me to open is. that and show it? Sure, go ahead. Okay. Can you see it? I'm. I'm. I can barely. Meanwhile, somewhere in England, <laughs> but everybody talks but... about barn finds. I think I found. Ah. Uh huh. I don't think it could be argued. That was, uh, yeah. Yeah. And Nigel. And I might. That's Nigel Ward. <laughs> of course, the, the, thing that jumped, the thing that jumped out to me was the Beetle convertible. In fact, there's two for sale in an auction. My girlfriend is interested in one. So I'm isn't that, isn't it? That, that barn is full of uh, projects that are going to be completed. And they're actually in the barn there behind where I was standing with the thing. Is that it was a, well, it was a GPA. Uh, okay, it's I think here, here's the four wheel steer GP. I think yes, yeah, but that's what... we were waiting to get onto the we were waiting to get onto the ferry there. Go ahead and shoot that. <laughs> that was awesome. That's cool. That's super cool. You wanna get Play it to the end. You gotta have four wheel steer. Other things rhyme with steer. Um, let's see. <laughs> uh, let's see. Yeah. Those, yeah. A lot of that looks like England. Mm -hmm. and let's see what else. You're close there.
from, from what I understand, we're going to be going. We're going to be heading back there at some point to uh, to, to Normandy and to into England, uh, which is going to be awesome. Now, what do we got here? <laughs> How many hats do you have? Oh my God! Well, uh, <laughs> I probably have. Well, I've got one of all the all the G five hundred three ones. I'm only missing one. Uh, and in fact, I've got one that I keep in a plastic container because there's only one of them in the world. If you if you look at the uh, the YouTube channel, the logo that's in the YouTube channel. Um, when I first started the project for Ron, I had them all at the shop in Oregon autograph a hat for me, and it's the only tan with blue bill hat that Ron ever had made. It was a prototype uh, that was made for, uh, you know, he decides what, what hats he's going to manufacture. Uh, so, oh boy, that's a funny one. <laughs> Different hat. Just saying. Yeah. Just saying. Yep. Just saying. Just saying. You don't, do you have one? What? Like a cowboy uh, do hat? Do you have a 503 hat? I do not. Well, I'll have to remedy that for you. I don't know as I don't have any personally in stock. I sent out probably oh 200 of those at one point. I was I was kind of giving them away as prizes and you know, little games and things we were playing on the web when I first started my YouTube channel. Uh, mm -hmm. Let me let me check with Ron and see if he's got any of the caps left and see if we can't get one of those to you. Yeah, I can just stick it in my next order. Um, Perfect. Yeah, uh, which I'm pretty sure I'm going to be doing one for like the rest of my life every week. So. <laughs> Um, yeah. and I like the I low profile. I like the low profile ones, not like the yeah, not like the yeah. trucker style. Uh, yeah, I don't think there's anything else that's those are now those are videos. I think you're back to the point where I was living in Aiken. That's I think from what I can see there on the screen. Yeah, I think that one you were you were doing the Aiken, South Carolina. <laughs> Oh. Yeah, you know that that's funny. We were standing outside a. Uh, I I was really into those sausages uh, that they had in, out of street vendors in Normandy, France. There. Oh and yeah, I know those those like white hot dog things. Is that insane or is that insane? Oh my god! I mean, that... Like I I keep trying to like I I've described those to people here and they're like, "What are you talking about?" Yep. And I, I would I would prefer to eat a sausage and have one of those little teeny French beers and I can't remember the name of the thing. The, the guys would go into the restaurants and I'd be like, I'll just stay out of anyway. The Aiken, South Carolina thing. Ron and I were standing on a street corner in this small little town in France when we were heading back to the the ferry, and some French guy in a Ford GPW drove by us the back and screamed out the side of his Jeep, South Carolina. And we, I, I was dumbfounded. I said, how could somebody in France? And you know, he says, hey, you, these, these folks see, uh, they see the uh, videos there. They but it was funny to hear that being screamed at me across the street in a small town of France. It was, it was pretty funny. <laughs> Can you even see what I'm showing? I've repeated this like four times. I can't. I'm busy telling you a story. What am I doing in that? Am I being a goofball? Um, too? Yeah, you look like you escaped from like, uh, like a kid in play video and some, little, <laughs> some little dance with a backwards hat <laughs> again the voters of south carolina are safe that's all i gotta uh, say yeah 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 yeah, yeah they, they are you know it's, but, but but the people on facebook are not <laughs> yeah well you know and it, 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 it's a hobby it's meant to be fun and there, yeah. there's 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 so much negativity out there. And I'll tell you a quick story. We spent well, probably about 15 hours lettering my uh, WC-51. Right. And, and you, you know how much work that can be and in, in going in and touching yeah. it up and trying to make everything look good. And then when I'm driving yeah. home, that one, a, a guy whose name is always spelled backwards, I'm not gonna say who it is, but I think most people know who this guy is. You know what I'm talking about? Yeah, yeah. I think I did. He immediately starts ridiculing my project, saying my font was wrong. Uh huh. Uh huh. And yeah, uh, I started calling it like a disco dodge and some other crap like that. And I was like, Yeah, who the yeah. hell are you? And yeah. Let's see, let's see your stuff. You know, why don't you get into this glass house? And yeah. you know, it really struck me one time. I was. Uh, working up at uh, Fort Lewis, Washington, I ran down to Vancouver Barracks 
uh, right. for an event, which is on the north. It's just across the river from Portland. Okay. And uh, I was looking at this guy's Jeep. And I go, oh, yeah, you know, if you just did this, this, and this, and this guy got really defensive, and it really struck me at that point, like how you're trying to be helpful and, you know, and you're just seeing things, but also this is someone else's pride and joy and that to yeah. not get too wrapped around the axle about stuff. And, if, you know, yeah. if, they, if they want your help, they'll ask for it. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I've, I've come up across that and I really came up across a lot of that when I, well, for starters, I did, I did make the CJ2A look like a, you know, it's, it doesn't necessarily look like an MB, but it's painted up like one's got the accessories. Like when I didn't change the grill and try to, you know, mask it as the fact that, you know, it, it's trying to make it pass it off an MB. I did that because I was super proud and loved my granddad. And I was also super proud of his, his service in the army. So I thought to myself, like was doing it, what a better way to honor my grandfather than to do that. And that's kind of got me started into the, into the, into the you know, G503 world. But when I first started the videos out for uh, doing this for Ron, uh, I did have a, a whole bunch of adversity at first. And, and, and so, so, so some of the things I've been just saying it, to be honest about it, uh, I do okay with people picking on me. And I, I, like you said earlier in the, in the interview here about the, uh, the having a thick skin. I always thought I did pretty well with that, but people sometimes really start to light into you and they start to get under your skin. But the phenomenon that I've always found very strange on social media is somebody can attack you multiple times and you ignore it multiple times. The minute you respond, you become the bad guy. So I, and I yeah. don't understand that phenomenon, but it, it's, it seems to hold pretty true. And, I well, and you, give, yeah, you give them traction and yeah. eventually yeah. they'll just move on to another target. Yeah. You know, but, yeah. but, but again, when you do videos like this, oh, <laughs> oh hold on, I need to screen share that one. <laughs> yeah, I do, I do some fun, silly stuff. There's no doubt about it. Yeah. You can see it. Yeah. When you do stuff like this, people just are going to make fun of you. I'm just saying, I'm just saying. Oh, yeah. Like I said, I, if I can't make fun of myself, it's fine. Uh, more so about you know there was some there were some guys who had been around the, the Jeep hobby for a long time that really didn't appreciate the fact that you know I was building this Jeep for Ron Fitzpatrick Jeep parts and you know the new the newbie guy that I kind of was. Uh, but that was the whole idea that the whole, the whole video series it was it was supposed to be somebody who never had did this before, which I had done it too, eh? so I did have some experience in that. Uh, but if you with help with proper parts. It's a nice space to work. And if you take your time, do a little bit a day. I don't know if you remember way back, my, one of my videos was uh, the hour a day challenge. And I, I was, I was like, you, you said you were doing your body work. I'm doing your slat and uh, I struggle with the body work. I don't enjoy it. I don't like it. I just, it's, it's, it's tedious to me. Mm -hmm. But what I committed to myself was I would do one hour a day, no matter what, no matter if I was upset, no matter if I was tired, no matter if I was, you know, I don't really feel like, you do that one hour a day, you'd be surprised after a month's time how much progress you have made. And uh, right. that was kind of a challenge. But, and, you know, I, I hear a lot of folks, guys message me constantly uh, with questions. And uh, my, I like to encourage. Uh, I like to say, you can do this. You can, you know, and I think that's probably why uh, I got to do the videos. It's, I was called a cheerleader at one point back, back in the day when I was doing 2A, you know. That's pretty good for a cheerleader. And I thought to myself, I was going to go with pom. I was going to go more with pom pom girl after that last video, but that's that is fine. That's that's fine. Uh, okay. uh, it, it'd be uh, you know, I I thought the guy was trying to be derogatory to me, but I took it as a compliment. And so, uh, you know, I'm not saying that I'm the most perfect person in the world, and I have done my share of blood and the same you know things that I probably shouldn't have to some individuals. But for the most part, I really enjoy watching guys or, or folks do their projects and, and that progress and the pride that they, they put into. And then so it's, it's just one of it's really easy for me to say, you know, hey, Jim, good job. Hey, Pete, good job. Hey, Derek, that's fantastic. Uh, that's just something that's, I mean, that I've done forever too. So it, I'll take the cheerleader title. It, it, it's fine. It's not a problem. <laughs> well, I, I don't know if you remember when I posted pictures of my filterette that and yes it's a super early filterette yep and um it was marked for for 12 volt i believe which right. uh although the 6 or 12 volt works it, it, it basically does the same thing 
Um, but then I posted pictures of it and I had somebody pop up and say, oh, well, that's that's a civilian model. I'm like, no, no, it came off of my flat. It's completely original. It has OD green paint on it. The guy's like, yeah. well, all military vehicles are 24 volt. And he pops up a couple pictures of some like M series stuff. I'm like, <laughs> I well, remember this. Yeah, they yeah. are. Those are 24 volt. And right. the, guy, the guy's like, you're an idiot. I'm like, you you just you don't know what you're talking about i yeah. think the, the the more you get into this the deeper you get into it the more you know how much you don't know that is a very profound statement and you couldn't have said that any better you're absolutely right because there's there's just so many little nuances and details and yep. and and things like that that you that when you get into stuff you just realize yeah. that that the stuff was so specialized yeah and um yeah. and really uh, and that's one thing i i i well I, I don't have to do it with the slat so much because it's so simple because it's so early but one thing i recommend to people if they're going to start restoring a jeep and they want it to be reasonably close yeah. to original is go through and just write a spec right and make a list of the things that it should have and should not have right. And, right. and and just literally go down the list with all the changes and kind of pinpoint the date in there. And then, uh, you know, as you're buying parts, steer it towards that. Um, you know, like right now with my slat, it's got a later uh, Speedo in it. And right, right. now, uh, Joe's Motor Pool doesn't have any of the slat Speedos in stock for now. I hear they're coming back at some point here. Soon. Yes, yes, that's true. That's true. But, uh, you know, so so now I'm kind of in this dilemma. Do I just keep this one or um, but it's and go back to my point is build that spec so that yeah. you, can, you can look, you know, you, you have something to go off of because you see something for sale. And you're like, oh, yeah, that's, you know, it may be marked early, mid or late. But yeah, um, and it, it's a little more tedious. But I also think, you know, that's that's the kind of person i am in terms of historical detail and sure if i really like to dig into but sure sure um uh, one of the one of the things that i wanted to share with you also uh during this little video we're doing when i first started the cj2a my wife made this statement to me she knew how much i love that jeep and she knew and i've had other jeeps and vehicles that were not necessarily military in my lifetime i've had wranglers and my wife came out when i was taking the first bolts off it and she said to me she looked at me and she said can you imagine the adventure you're going to be on and the people that you're going to meet because of your grandfather's Jeep? Mm -hmm. And I don't think there's ever been a statement that, and she, like I said, she just came off, off top of her and said that to me. And she had never been more right in a million years. And that, those, this, that vehicle has really opened up the world to me. Um, and, and, and it's, it's an honor and a privilege is what it is. But the reason I thought to say that to you was, as you were talking about, as, as you get more involved, and you get more into details and things. The folks that are out there, there's guys out there who have extremely wealth of knowledge about what this should be and what that should be. And then there's guys who are really good at doing with their hands. Mm -hmm. um, if you get those two to those two type people to meet together, then they can accomplish anything in this in this hobby. Uh, that's one of the things that I, yeah, I, I, I appreciate people who like everything exactly the way it should be. And I also like people who make it work. I, and I like to, to see different stories and hear different stories. The bashing thing, I'm, I'm not a big fan of, but you know, that goes on, unfortunately, in, 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 the, in the social media world. And mm -hmm. We do our best on the 503 website, you know, there in the, in the uh, Facebook groups there to try to keep that to a minimum. It always seems to be one or two, and then they <laughs> and then they wonder why they why they are not allowed to participate. When you start calling people names and telling them what a bunch of idiots they are because of what they did on a vehicle, that's a good way not to be allowed to uh, comment anymore if you follow what I'm saying. <laughs> in in the World War II reenacting community, oh, you know, I, I've always said authenticity is a weapon that people use on each other, and it's, yeah. you you can always find something wrong with someone's impression. Yeah. Um, and, 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 and try and bludgeon with it, you know, and, yeah. and also never, never have so few fought so hard over so little. You, you said that right. And it, unfortunately what that does, and I've seen now being involved myself with the, with the two A and then actually being a representative of Ron Fitzpatrick G parts, I have seen literally 
dozens of, of, of enthusiasts, and I'm going to say between you know, young people and old people, like they start getting involved and they're all excited and they can't wait to do something. And then somebody comes, oh, that's, you and can't somebody that comes along and crushes them. And then they disappear, Tim. And th- yeah. I think that is probably the saddest thing I can, I, I'm thinking of five names going through my head right now of guys that I was really excited, excited to see what they're doing, what they're doing. And guys jumped all over and they just, they just disappeared. Um, and so when guys do that, what are you going to do when there's nobody who's interested anymore because they don't want to take a you know verbal bludgeoning over something that they're you know being so proud of and put so much effort and energy into? So, so maybe folks should might maybe think about that. You know, I, 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 I've been guilty of doing things like that myself. I try hard not to. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Okay. Well, we've been going a while here. Anything else you want to yeah. throw in or? Yeah, no, I, I, I could sit here and talk with you all day, but I know we don't have the time or probably the, uh, the, the video to, to keep going. But I really appreciate you having me. I, again, uh, this, was, this was our agenda here. As you can yep. see, it's a blank sheet of paper. <laughs> so uh, that, That's the best way to do it. I mean, when I do those videos, you know, a lot of times you know, they, they're not scripted. I'm not reading off a piece of paper. Uh, I'm just talking myself through what I'm doing. And, and I think it works. I think this, this interview worked out fantastic. I've uh, been watching your uh, interviews you've been doing, and I'm, I'm happy that you had me on and it could be a part. Uh, I will share with you, with this video with my YouTube channel and a couple other things I do. And uh, uh, I think what you're doing is fantastic. And I think that you're going to have really good success with it. And I wish you the best. Mm-hmm. Thank you. I, it's, it's just such, such a simple idea. And uh, as I said with Rory yesterday, like I don't, like, like my, my, my skills are more in research and writing and, you know, kind of in that area. And I just love this stuff. So I started off doing, you know, video about progress in my slat and I'm like, I'm really not adding a lot. It's just really more just updating people. But then this this idea kind of came along and, you know, just keep it simple and get a variety of guests. And, and, you know, this is something you can put on your, uh, you know, you can listen to on your commute to work. Yeah. Or, uh, you know, if you're bored <laughs> or, uh, you know, you don't, you don't want to work on your project. And, yeah. and the, the thing about it, like, we love the vehicles, but I think we also love having in co- things in common with other people in the that, hobby. I, I, got, I got, I got to say my biggest thing, and I, I come up with this one night, I was thinking about it and I said, it's not necessarily the vehicle for me. It is the people behind them. There's no question about I love going into shows and going to you know, meets and seeing folks and talking and hearing their story because most folks in one form or another who do this kind of thing do have a reason and a story behind what they do. And they love to share it with you. And uh, I, that's just that's a phenomenon in itself that just goes along with uh, this this lifestyle. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, the, 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 the vehicles are just an expensive excuse to get together. And, uh, it, it is it, it, in a way and you, you, that's a good way to say it. hey before we wrap this up i did want to ask you one thing because you kind of hit me up with the willis willies thing yeah uh I, I i like the title of your video channel here the peep show and i know i know why you did that but maybe you could s- tell the folks why you titled it that uh i think that's an interesting phenomenon in itself as well uh, adam francis is uh kind of cool me into that years ago and i don't think a lot of folks know that so why do you call it the, the peep show not the jeep show <laughs> well first off i call it the jeep show it would just get completely lost right in right in all these other jeep channels and right. I, I actually did a video that kind of describes um the entomology of the word peep uh and yep. the original the original jeeps were actually called peeps and jeeps were larger vehicles dodge right right um before jeeps actually came onto the scene and yeah. uh you know and i just thought it was kind of a catchy title and i and my, my 42 script is named heap oh cool and so h-e-e-p so yeah. you know it made perfect sense to name the slat peep and then i was yeah. thinking about it and came across hey we'll just call it the peep show Yep. So yep. And I, I'm sure there are some very disappointed teenage boys <laughs> who log into this channel <laughs> and, and they see us talking. Yeah, yeah. Who are these, who are these guys talking about these big, the old World War II vehicles? 
But uh, yeah, uh, Adam Francis, uh, he's one of the admins on the 503 site there on Facebook. Fantastic young guy. Uh, he uh, is the one who clued me into the uh, fact that back in the early days when the, these vehicles first came out, they called them peeps, not, not jeeps. And uh, he had documentation to prove that. So when I saw your channel there, I thought, it's pretty pretty neat how he did that. That's yeah, and the, lo like the, the logo I actually drew on just like a PowerPoint slide. And, yeah. Uh, yeah. and again, it's got the additional slats in there. Yeah. Fantastic. Got like the, yeah, fantastic. Ten or eleven slats in there, so you know, I just, I just thought it was something different, kind of catchy, and uh, yeah. you know, easy to brand, and uh, yeah. you know, just one of those kind of moments. Um, okay, fantastic. All yeah. right, now I won't forget. I won't forget. I'll, I'll talk with Ron this afternoon, and I'll see about getting one of these G five hundred three hats. Tim, I didn't know you didn't have one. And uh, again, thank you for having me on. I yeah. very much appreciate it. Great. Hey, thank thanks for coming on. So. Uh, um okay hey whoops nope switch back <laughs> hey uh th thanks for uh tuning in this episode of the peep show and uh you know if you enjoyed this like and share if you don't like it why are you still watching why are you still watching if you don't like this like don't you have something better to do so anyway hey thanks for watching and i will catch you on the next one <laughs>